Um, so everybody that's on here is in the Northern Nevada group that we have, Ashley. We are a small regional group of Northern Nevada coaches in surrounding areas. Just so you know where we're coming from. The ladies on here, um, except for Danielle, you're messing me up because your name's your last name's um, are are the ladies that are helping that I started doing our uh, quarterly uh, Super Saturday. This will be, it's been about a year and a half now that I've been doing them consistently. And these ladies stepped up to help me um, because we really want to grow the Northern Nevada area. One of the things we're trying to do is get some training within our, within our group and eventually do some um, fit clubs and some, hi, and some, um, coach opportunities so we're kind of just really getting to start growing to starting to grow it's kind of like if they if we build it they will come type thing one yeah. of the things that the people in that group said that they were struggling with was inviting which is you know you and I had already been talking so I'm going to do a quick intro on Ashley um, Ashley was recommended me recommended to me by probably three or four different coaches that that are mentors for me um because I was needing some help with social media posting and stuff like that. And she's very, I think she only works with beach body coaches and she can let you know that's true. Um, but she has been very helpful and she actually even also, I'm gonna, I didn't get a chance to tell you this actually, but I did hire Anna. So she helped me find an assistant as well. So she's got quite a few connections, but she also has a lot of um, great information for us. She, she used to sell knives through a company called Cutco, which I've never heard of. Um, and then she has been in the fitness industry for 14 years, um, starting as part-time associate, building up to president, and now she has her own business. And she's also, are you a coach, Ashley? So I'm like what they call, you know, the discount coach. Like I just, I <laughs> drink technology and I got the discount. There's nothing, that's how I started. Yeah. So. Without saying anything else, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to her. I'm going on mute. And if you guys aren't on mute, please go ahead and do so. And Ashley, I may look like I'm distracted, but I'm going to check the other pay, the other groups to see if they're okay, if they are having issues getting on. 100%. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I am all about PowerPoints and really making sure points are super clear. So I'm going to switch over here in one second. And if you feel like there's this awkward like looking up at a screen going on. I just got a desktop and I've always used a laptop. So I'm still getting things figured out. Um, so anyway, that's what that is all about. Um, so yeah, I'm really pumped to be here and um, to meet all of you guys virtually and to be talking about this topic today because this is the one that comes up the most with coaches and I think the one that can make the biggest difference in your business um, when you can really start to lean into inviting and doing it in a way that really, really feels authentic to you. So um, uh, let's just get the screen. Oh, you don't want to see all my, there we go. Messy uh, backsplash there. Okay, let's just get to the present mode. Okay, cool. Did you hit record? Yeah. I am, yeah, we're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you guys, let's see. Oh no, it won't let me move you a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna put you guys down for now. I always like to see people's faces. So um, I'll do this for now just to make sure everyone can sort of see. Um, all right guys, so we're gonna jump in. Uh, tonight's presentation is all about the art of inviting and really how to not sound like a salesy sales shark when you are inviting your um, potential customers and coaches to join you. So I'll just tell you guys a little bit about me to kick things off. So my whole jam is about eliminating the marketing overwhelm. And I love presentations and I've done over 500 presentations live in online training sessions. Um, I've taught over a million students and 14 years old was uh, the age that I started my own, I guess, like entrepreneurial pursuit. Um, I started my first business. Um, I sold Hello Kitty out of my parents' flooring store. So that was, uh, that was my first crack at things. I'm just going to shut my door here. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. 
So what I really do, um, and maybe I'm going to back up just a smidge here. Um, I was, my mom went into contractions in a Gold's Gym parking lot. So it really, for me, my career in the fitness industry started when I was just getting into, getting into life, getting into things. Um, I went to school for English literature and women's studies. And I thought like, when I was a kid, I was going to be a writer. Um, but obviously like the gym life was very much entrenched in who I was. My mom was an aerobics instructor. My dad was a bodybuilder. And so my first, I had a couple part-time jobs, but the first one I really loved and like would go into work and go above and beyond was definitely my first job at a, at a gym part-time. Um, so that's where my career sort of started off. I was 17 years old, just kind of, you know, part-time uh, part working in university. Um, but it was sort of like I never left. I became a personal trainer um, and worked my way up in the corporate side of fitness. So everything from like selling memberships, like, you know, the old, old school days when you used to have to call people <laughs> to, you know, book appointments and all that sort of stuff. That is really where I spent my 20s. Um, and I worked, I worked really hard because I loved it. Like fitness was just my thing. And I really never felt like I was selling something that, um, I wouldn't want myself. Uh, so I, I did every job in the fitness world, everything from working in training and development, uh, working as a district manager. And I eventually moved to the West coast of Canada, um, where I worked for a couple of different companies. And my last position, uh, was president of a fitness company on Vancouver Island, where I had eight clubs under, uh, my leadership. Um, so it was about two years ago that I started chatting with a really good friend of mine and she was telling me about Beachbody and I was like, okay, I kind of get it. Like, uh, just in terms of the structure, like I get the fitness side of things, love it, like very cool. Um, and she was telling me about some of the struggles she was having with training and development. And so I just started creating courses for her and her team. Um, and that's how this kind of started for me. And it's really interesting now because I look back and it's like, you know, uh, if you think about, um, I always talk about your sweet spot. So what you're born to do, what you love to do and what your skills and education have really taught you. And I think we all have these things that we really need to become clear on. So I was obviously born to be in fitness. Like there was no doubt about that. Um, but what I really love to do is train and teach people things. Um, I think that's why I really liked being a manager in different positions is I could take something that was maybe an abstract concept or something that was complicated and I could make it simple so people could just apply it. And so I'm really a sucker for simplicity. Um, and then my skills in education really was not only in fitness, but I loved writing. I love to be able to help people move them through my words. So that is where this sort of perfect storm developed. And what I do now is I help create done for you, um, posting plans and marketing plans, including emails and, and what to post on social and uh, what to po post in your challenge groups, all that sort of stuff. And really the core intention behind all of that is to help eliminate the overwhelm um, in your marketing efforts so you can have the business of your dreams. Because I really feel that when you can take away all the stuff you hate doing, like that is where you can grow your business to wherever you want to be. So it's all about outsourcing the things that you're not great at. You're never going to be like a genius at those things. So why not figure out a way to outsource it? And that's really where, um, uh, I guess everything sort of started for me and, and what I do now. Um, and so I work with a bunch of different coaches, whether it be they just do like a done for you 30 day, like monthly plan with me up to leading retreats. I have 15 star diamonds I work with as well. So I, I have the whole scale of the beach body world and I just, I love every bit of it. So that is just a little bit about uh, me and what I do. Okay. I'm going to bring your guys there faces back. Okay, cool. So we're going to jump into the training um, and really getting into um, what today's call is about. So now that you guys understand a little bit more about my background, um, where I'm coming from, we're going to dig into the sales training and uh, a strategy that I used to um, not only teach, but use myself all the time through any sales interaction. So the thing about selling is that, you know, when you probably first got into this, you thought 
that it was going to be super easy, right? Like you heard about Beachbody and you're like, oh yeah, totally good. Like, sure, I'll just post about my journey and it'll be easy and people will just come to me. And that's how these things work, right? Um, and the thing is, um, there are always ebbs and flows in business. So if you guys know, if you've worked in the fitness industry for more than a year, you'll know there are two months that you're really swimming with the current. That's January and that's September. Those are the months that when you reach out to people, you're going to get yes, 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 like consistently with no's in there, of course. But then there are going to be other months that are a little bit more challenging where you hear like, I have to do my Christmas shopping. I have to do this. I have to do that. You're going to hear that over and over again. And that is just the ebbs and flows of the business. Um, it's really important to know because I think sometimes people take that on themselves and they're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not made for this or they have a hard time separating themselves from the numbers and from people's reactions. So I really, I want to set the tone here um, just so that we all understand that there are ebbs and flows with business and specifically times of the year that people are going to be more apt to start on their fitness schools and more times that people are not. So in the months that people are not as apt, you have to dig in and you have to work harder. It is a numbers game when it comes to inviting and people have to be ready. People don't just see a post and they're like, okay, cool. I'm ready to join now. That's not how it works. People go through a series of thoughts in their mind where they go from pre-contemplative to uh, moving through a journey to like they're finally ready to join. It doesn't happen in one post. So you got to just be consistent. And um, it really is um, important to just stay the course at all times throughout your business. Um, and you really, um, there's a big difference between being a pest with something and being intentional. So just know that every post that you're putting out there, you're speaking to one person. You're not trying to capture everyone. It's really about knowing exactly who you want to attract in your business and pretending that they are sitting on the other side of that screen. They're the only one that's ever going to read your post. That's really, really important um, as you start to build up your business and work towards um, inviting. That's really important. So the three most common things that um, the pitfalls that happen when coaches are typically inviting are the first would be uh, they don't want to sound salesy. So we've all heard of like the used car salesman sort of analogy. We all get the feels of like what that feels like. It's never comfortable. And um, you might have been approached like this in the past. And you, you sort of are like, am I just a number to you? Like, I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, and you definitely don't want to come across like that. Uh, and I know I hear that all the time from coaches. Like they won't even attempt because they're worried about – how that feels on the other side. And that's obviously not the answer either, right? There's, there's definitely a middle ground where you can get to your authentic self and feel really comfortable to invite. Um, but there are some obviously steps you need to go through to understand what is going to be your inviting type. Um, so when you first got into this business, you probably didn't think you may have to sell yourself and business would just come naturally. Um, and really it's all in the way that we approach people. If you approach it like a sale, you're going to feel salesy. If you approach it like you're educating people, you're going to feel like you're educating people. And we're going to talk about that pre-framing in a minute here, but that is a really important distinction to make. Um, the second thing is uh, maybe you don't know what to say or have confidence in how to actually approach someone. That's a typical uh, pitfall. What happens is confidence comes from past performance. So it's really difficult to feel confident in inviting if you haven't really done it before or you haven't really had a lot of success with messaging. We don't like to do, do things that we have to like go through those beginner steps. If you guys think about like any workout um, that you've tried, You've probably tried a workout that you're like, oh, like I'm just not really good at this move. Like this workout might not be for me. And then what happens is you start to do it more and more and you're like, mm, I'm going to do more of this core to force because I'm really good at it now. And you like to do things you're good at. So you have to put yourself out there when it comes to messaging. It's really important. It's like a muscle. You just have to practice to get really, really good at it. Um, the next thing is that people have a big fear of rejection and, uh, they hate hearing no. Um, 
And so what happens is they don't even attempt, which obviously like is not the answer, right? Um, when you hear no, what it really means is not right now. It's not a no to you. It's not personal. It's really just I need more information and right this second is not the time I'm going to commit. So you have to remember that. Um, in the fitness world, when we would do uh, calls and different things like that, like it's, it's similar in the sense that when you're messaging people, you have to message a certain number of people to get a yes. So no, it is a mathematical equation. I'm not downplaying the fact that obviously you're talking to re real people, but typically People need to be approached a certain number of times to move to a yes. And so you just really have to remember that it's going to, like, if you're not getting 10 no's a day, you're not reaching out to enough people. You shouldn't just be looking for the yeses. You have to get enough no's to get your business in the place where you want, want, uh, want it to go. I read this quote, I think I was actually earlier today, and I had saved it because it was, um, talking about the difference between where you are right now and where you want to be in your business is the number of no's that you've gotten. Thought like, how powerful is that? It's really being able to change that mindset around uh, no and what it actually means. Um, so this can be all hard to balance. I get that. Um, you know, you know that inviting is a core competency in this business, and um, you need to do it to grow your business. Like if you think about a big rock, this is one of them. So today it really is about getting the steps and getting really, really clear. There's five of them um, that are going to take you from maybe not loving messaging to really loving it because you're going to be able to nail that process every single time. Um, and this is really how you'll, you'll start to scale your business and really start to see massive growth. Um, and what I want to remind you of is that it's about the daily discipline. So when I say like, you're going to get like a lot of no's, you have to stick to like, we used to have this thing. So when people would work at the front desk at the gym, we would always be trying to get referrals. Right. And a lot of the young customer service representatives were like, no, I don't want to, I don't even want to ask. They wouldn't even want to ask for referrals. And here's the problem is that if we don't ask at all, we're never going to get, any of them and a lot of a lot of members would um, actually be very happy to give their friends passes and different things like that so instead of setting a goal of you need to get 25 referrals we would set goals around how many no's I want you to get a hundred no's today and that just seems to really work better for your mindset like if you set out to every day get 50 no's like that is your mind is working towards a goal in a different way than being focused on the negative. Like a no is one more check mark that you get to check off. So that's just an important thing to think about. How can you make this process around a daily activity versus like, oh, uh, like, you know, kind of wincing every time you hear a no. It's like part of the process that you're trying to get to. Okay, so um, if you keep, inviting and messaging the old way, you're probably going to have icky feels. So what we're going to do is you're going to learn the five-step process to really inviting in an authentic, uh, authentic way, authentic to your voice and who you are without all the, the sales slime. And here's the thing, like it's really important to remember, you are the expert. If you guys think about your journey and how far you've come as a fitness coach, you probably started somewhere where you knew nothing and you've been able to transform your life. So I want you to remember, you are an expert and you are actually selling nothing. What you're doing is you're guiding people and that's how I really want you to think about this process. You're simply educating and guiding them to a solution that may help them if they wanna take action. You, in your interactions, you're really gonna be selling nothing. Okay. So we all understand that at this point, if you want results like never before, you have to be willing to invite like you've never invited before. So this is, uh, these are the five steps to a non-salesy uh, message. So I'm gonna go through these in a little bit more detail here, um, but these are the five things. Choose your mantra, build commonalities, define goals and timeframe, provide solutions, 
ask for the commitment. They have to be done in this order. Otherwise, people will feel uncomfortable and the, the conversation is not going to flow as easily unless you're doing these things in, in these steps. Okay, so the first one is all about choosing your mantra. So this is about getting fired up and focused um, before doing any inviting at all. So um, what we, how we pre-frame something really determines the way in which we execute on it. So we can definitely, I think you guys can relate to this if you think about a workout you know, you go into a workout and you're like, oh, like I'm really tired. Like haven't had my pre-workout, like this isn't going to be a great workout. What you think is what becomes. So when you sit down to do any sort of action on your business, you really need to be honed in to how your, what your attitude needs to be and what is going to fire up and focus you. So I won't play this video, but I freaking, oh, or I might. We'll see. Just kidding here. Have you guys seen this before? Jessica's daily affirmations. Like I'm telling you, like, I'm going to guess. I don't have children. I'm going to guess she's four, four, five. That might be a horrible guess. Let's just say that's accurate. If she can do it, like, I'm going to assume that we can all do it. Just for her, obviously, it's like getting in front of the mirror and saying, you know, what she's grateful for. My house is great. My hair is great. Um, you know, I love my sister. I love my mom. Like there is definitely something powerful in gratitude. And they always say that the people, you can't feel two emotions at once. Like if you're, if you're grateful, you can't be thinking about fear and scarcity and not getting what you want. When you are grateful, you are rich, right? So the whole idea behind this is that Whatever you need to do to fire up and focus yourself, you need to do that before you get behind your keyboard and start messaging people. Tony Robbins talks a lot about this. Like he has a lot, if you're a Tony Robbins fan or not, you know, just there's someone out there that will walk you through a version of this that's going to work for you. But it's super important that you get centered before you dive in and just start messaging. It may seem a little bit strange, but you will, you will word things differently when you are in the right mindset versus if you aren't. You will be more confident in your messaging and little things, like the difference between messaging someone and saying, um, would you be interested in this or which one of these options do you prefer? Like seems like maybe not a big difference in word choice. One is assumptive though, the second one. The first one is like indecisive. So getting your mindset is the first step. So if you don't have this video, make sure to just drop a comment there and I'll make sure to include it in the follow-up uh, with the recording. Um, oh, it's going to work. Okay. okay. So, um, oh, this is, I was just telling you guys about this quote. So would you like to give, uh, would you like me to give you a formula for success? It's quite simple, really. Double your rate of failure that's how we got to think about it is the more we put ourselves out there. Yeah. The more we're going to fail, but that is how we also succeed. If you haven't seen the Brene Brown call to courage. Oh my goodness. You have to see it. It's so good. All about putting yourself out there. That is where joy and um, all of those great emotions lie. Sure. Fear and rejection and all that lies there as well. But if you want to be successful, if you want to get to that next level, you have to put yourself out there. Okay, so this is your action plan for how you can really take step one and uh, make sure that you're practicing it. Develop a daily routine. Maybe you're going to meditate, you're going to move and breathe, you're going to do your workout first, get some of that pre-workout into you. Um, you have a video you're going to watch, you have a vision board. Um, whatever it is, develop a routine and don't miss it. Do it every time. Maybe it's a picture of a trip that when you achieve your goal, you're going to take whatever it is, just something to get you in the right mindset. Connect with that. Why before you get behind any messaging, that is the first thing you need to do. All right. Step number two, moving right on focus on building commonalities with your prospects. So what this means is that has anyone ever been interviewed before put up your hand yeah cool okay the best 
Sorry, my dog keeps coming in and out, in and out. Okay, the best secret I can tell you about being interviewed is that the more you are like the person that is interviewing you, the more likely you are to be hired. What this means is a lot of people go into an interview and they're like, oh, I gotta do all this talking. No, 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 no. You need to do way less talking and you need to ask that person lots of questions to find out what they believe. And then in that interview process, you need to reinstate what you've heard from them so that they see you as someone that they get along with, your values are aligned, all these things. So this is a really big, um, there's a lot of scientific evidence behind this when it comes to building commonalities with prospects. So you want to establish yourself as like the other person and really focus in on what you have in common. So how you're going, um, this is a little bit about the why. So all things being equal, people will do business with and refer businesses to those they know, like, and trust. So if you have two products that are super equal and price is exactly the same, that customer will always go to the person that they like a little bit more. That is just how business works. You have to build likability. So just gonna do like a quick like aha moment here for a second. When you are posting, you know those posts that feel like vulnerable and you're like, oh, like I don't even know if I should press enter right now because it's so vulnerable and you're like, but I feel like I need to share it. Those are the posts that help build no like and trust. And you'll have people that will unfollow you and go the other way. See ya, bye bye You were never going to be besties anyway. That is totally a good thing. Or other side of it, they freaking love you and they can't get enough of you. Keep doing that. Keep going towards the light in terms of finding more people that can't get enough of you. So those thoughts that sort of like rumble around in your brain that you're like, oh, like I don't know if I should say that. Say that and say more of it. That's how you really get to build that likability. So how do you actually build though? Um, we know that it, it's helpful, science backs it up, but how do you actually build commonality and rapport with someone that you don't know? So the only, um, the, the way to do that is to do a little bit of, you've gotta do like a smidge of research, right? Like, you know, you guys are both like, whatever it is, like people that might be, you might live in the same area, you might both have children, you might both really like a certain product, like whatever it is, you've got to suss that out a bit um, and do a little bit of research. You know what, you guys probably uh, maybe got a lot of these messages before you um, got into this, but I get these messages all the time that were like, oh, are you on a health and fitness journey too? Like, da -da -da -da, like it starts there and instantly I'm like, you know how many times I hear that? We're all on a health and fitness journey. Like don't health and fitness journey me. We all are. So you've got to go a little bit deeper and pick something. I'm not saying that like, like line couldn't work, but make it a little more like that you've done your research. So if someone were to send a message like, hey, I, I see that you, um, let's say like are renovating your house. That's amazing. Like we just got through a reno as well. Like that is something that is not, you know, it's not surface. It's a little bit deeper, but instantly uh, like I'm going to relate to that person because you know, when you're renovating, like you haven't had a kitchen for a year and you're like, I don't know if I could, uh, my healthy eating is just struggling right now. I'm, I'm really struggling. So instantly we have something in common that we can talk about, right? That is how you want to spark up that conversation, not from something super broad that they're like, yeah, I get this message three times a day. Sorry. Nope. So that is the first way you're really going to start. That is how you start to untangle the salesiness is you actually take an interest in the people that you're going to reach out and talk to and you show that effort, right? You show that effort that you know a little bit about their life. You're not just copy and pasting and sending out the exact same message because people can, every, you know, we, we deal with smart people and it's, it's just one of those things. You're going to know that that's what's happening. So make sure you take that little bit of effort to build that commonality and talk about what you guys have in common just from looking at their pictures and stuff like that or maybe their stories. Um, all right. 
So in order to take action here, um, step number one is before inviting, do your homework. Make sure you know a little bit about them. Pick something that you have in common. Use their name. This is really important. The sweetest sound to someone is their name. Um, make sure you use it. Give them a compliment and tell them that you have something in common. So an example of this could be like, hey, Crystal, I absolutely love those new countertops you picked. I can see that you're renovating your house. We are in the exact same process. I don't know about you, but like we have not had a kitchen for a year. How is your kitchen coming along? Right there. That is the opening line, okay? So I've used her name. I've given her a compliment. I don't like, you don't have to like make stuff up. Like pick some, everyone has something like going on in their life that you can compliment them on. Pick something and really then start to build that bridge. Don't leave it open. Like, hey, I see you got a cool kitchen. Cool. Like your conversation ain't going nowhere. Always end with a question. And not just a, like, an open-ended question is best. Like, how long have you been without a kitchen? She has to answer it with, like, with something versus a yes or no. Like, you kind of get stuck, like, on a bad date where, like, if the answer is, like, do, like, you know, I don't know, like, do you work out? No. You have nowhere to go from there, right? That can be really limiting. So make sure you end with a question and try to open it up from there. Um, okay, so let's go on to the next one. Step number three, aha, determine their goals. So this is so important and think about it this way, right? We've just layered on two steps, like choose your mantra. Now you're gonna start to build some commonalities. Now we're gonna move into determining their goals. So when you understand what someone wants to achieve, this is really what helps you become not salesy. Um, when you don't, it's super salesy. Because if somebody is just saying, oh, hey, I, I see you're on a fitness journey as well. Try my new product. Not saying anyone does that, but I'm just saying, you have no idea, you don't know my life. Like, you don't know what I've got going on. So really make sure at this point that you're sort of transitioning with the goal being you wanna determine what they're working towards. So it can be something like, you know, Crystal's responded, yeah, we were without a kitchen for six months. It was super challenging um, to try to like, you know, keep the kids fed. We relied a lot on takeout. Yeah, like totally crazy time. Um, and so at that point, you know, I would want to say to her, yeah, I totally agree. This last year has been probably the most challenging for like trying to eat clean and, and things like that. Um, but I've definitely found that there's a couple of tools that have really worked well for me. Um, are, what, what type of goals do you have right now for your, um, you know, uh, health and fitness? Or um, you can phrase this part, like how would be your typical language, but you just, you want to ask that question about like, what are you working towards, right? Um, that, and what you could do to preframe that a little bit is say, um, you know, like eating healthy is really important to me. It's one of the things I really love to focus on. Um, and I would link it back to something in their profile that tells me that they're into health and fitness, not just throwing it out there. Cause that could be salesy, right? So I might say, Oh, like I see that you love to go on walks with your kids. And it really seems like you guys lead a really ha uh, healthy and active lifestyle. What's the number one goal you're working towards? So you've got to like tie that together. You can't just like throw that in there without, um, we've sort of transitioned that, right? Like I know from her profile, she works out or does some sort of physical activity, like ha likes to lead a healthy lifestyle. So you want to tie that in. <coughs> okay. So this is really the theme here. It's stop selling. You're not selling anything. You are helping people. That is bottom line what you are trying to do. It's not about what product can I get in front of them. It's about what do they actually need? And sometimes you're going to find people that like, they're like, no, I love, I love keto. Like that's for me. And it's like, cool, do your thing. Like, that's awesome. But what we have might not be the product for them. Or it might be if they're like having horrible, um, you know, reactions to keto or whatever, right? You really just go into it with that intention of helping people 
not just selling them something to sell them something, right? Um, so in this process, you're really listening to try to find out what the problem is that they're dealing with that you can help solve. Um, you wanna be intentional with the questions that you're asking them. Their guards are gonna be up, right? Like you are a stranger from the internet asking them questions. So tread lightly here. If you're feeling like they're not giving you a lot, build more rapport and commonality with them um, before diving into like their fitness school stuff. Um, be very conversational. Don't be point blank. Like what's your number one fitness goal? When do you want to achieve it? What have you tried in the past? Like, don't be weird. Like make it conversational how you would actually talk to someone, right? Um, if you find you're better on the phone, um, send them voice messages. I got to check those voice messages. If someone sends me one, I can't let it just sit there. I'm like, all right, fine. Play. What did you say? Like versus when you get a text message, you can just read it quick and then ignore it. Voice memos are funny. They're something very interesting. I would definitely consider. Um, so the, um, okay. Yeah. We've talked about that. Okay. So how do you get to their goals? This is a question that typically comes up from this. I, uh, you know, talk about um, diving into this and understanding. Um, be authentic, build conversation, and just be really curious. The main things you want to know is what is their number one fitness goal? Like, do they want to lose weight? Are they looking to tone up? Are they looking to fit back in their jeans? Like, what is it that's driving them to want to make some changes in their life? Um, what have they tried in the past? They're probably going to tell you, oh, I either. I went to the gym. I haven't tried anything. Um, I tried whatever it is like Bernstein's keto, whatever. Um, and you also want to know, um, what, how they would rate their nutrition on a scale of one to 10. We all know like nutrition is ultimately really what's going to help them make those big shifts. Like you can't out train a bad diet. The exercise though is going to keep you motivated. It's going to keep your endorphins super high and like when people um exercise they don't they don't typically have those um same feelings of like cravings and overeating and drinking too much like they feel really good and they're not trying to change their state in that way so you really want to get a good understanding of those things um because what you're going to do after you understand these you're going to give them a solution using what they've told you so you've got to get enough information here before you try to give them a solution, right? This part is really, really important. And there's tons of other questions you can ask. It's just being really specific. And what do I need to understand before I can make a recommendation? Like another one might be like, how long do you like to work out? Because if they tell me 20 minutes, I'm not going to recommend the 80 day obsession, right? You got to understand that stuff so that you don't get objections down the road really understand your customer first. Okay, so the take action step here is ask them about their goals and when they want to see their results by. Be open to alternative measures, like does video work better for you? Does audio, where do you perform your best? And don't rapid fire questions. It really should be conversational as you're asking these things. Okay, step number four here. Provide solutions using exactly what you've been told. So what this means is that they have given you a bunch of information and what you really need to do now is repeat back to them why you're making your recommendations that you are because you're an expert and obviously like working with clients is your jam, understanding what's holding them back, providing them with the right tools to move forward confidently in the direction of their fitness goals. Um, no matter how knowledgeable and enthusiastic you are, if you do not solve the problem, you won't satisfy the customer. So that's why that step before about understanding their goals is so crucial. If, if it doesn't seem like you really know what their problem is, you don't speak to it, you, they're not going to continue on uh, wanting to have dialogue with you or being open to um, hearing your solution at all. So. Um, making a purchasing decision ultimately is solving the problem that they have. So really make sure you take all that information that they've shared with you about their number one fitness goal, about how long they want their workouts to be, about how their nutrition is, 
and wrap it up in a really nice package for them. So if they told me um, a bunch of things like they want to lose weight, they don't really feel a lot of motivation to work out, their nutrition is about a five out of 10, and they've had this goal for six months and they have like a vacation coming up that they really want to get to, you'll find too when you ask people about their goals, Pandora's box opens and they just tell you everything, which is awesome too. So at this stage of the game, what you want to do is you want to say, Crystal, um, thank you so much for sharing all that information with me. I'm so excited to be able to share with you a couple of things I would recommend. So if you're looking to fit back into your, um, your genes from five years ago before you were married, um, there is a, a program that I absolutely love. So it's called Morning Meltdown. Um, and why I love this program is I know you mentioned that you don't really like long workouts. Like you're not someone that can like get to the gym and like be there for an hour. These workouts are typically like 20 to 30 minutes. They're super quick. It's like you hit it and quit it. And the great thing about it is that you're going to notice like a ton of toning up in the, um, the areas of your lower body because of all the different movements that we're doing. And that's really obviously going to help like get those genes on and, and get you feeling really, really good. The other part about MM, sorry, morning meltdown that I love is the nutrition plan that accompanies it. And I'm sure, you know, nutrition is just like, it's 90% plus of you getting to your goals. So this is really going to set you up for success. A lot of uh, gyms and fitness centers don't take that extra step and don't do that nutrition component. So this is going to make sure you get the full package deal with, with um, everything that's provided and make sure you get to your goal. So I'm basically taking everything that she's told me and I'm repackaging in, and you could use this for anything. It doesn't have to be morning meltdown, like it could be anything from here on out, use that to tie it up and take everything she's told you, which shows them you're listening, wrap that up and then deliver it back to her. So use their language and their verbiage. Like if she says, I want to fit into my jeans, don't be like, oh, so you want to lose some weight around the booty. Like don't make up stuff, use their words because that builds rapport when you share the same language. Um, and then repeat their goals and benefits that they told you that they're looking for because it shows not only that you're listening, but like that you're customizing something for exactly what, um, what they've told you that they want. Okay. Last step here is ask for the commitment. This is the crazy part is like 60% of people don't take this step. They like do all this work and then they're like, cool. See you never. Like, and they don't say anything and they don't do anything with it. And you've just done all this work. I've been on the other side of this before. Once I met with a personal trainer, got, did all the things, was waiting for her to ask me to be her client. She did nothing. And I felt like crap because of that. I was like, what? She doesn't want to work with me. I'm not worthy of her presence. Like, what is this? So it's weird being on the other side sort of sucks when someone doesn't ask you to like be a part of joining, like me coaching them. That, that is an important piece of this. So um, you have to ask them, you can't get around it, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna option close it and you're going to uh, ask them which one is better for you. This one, this option, or this, this option. Um, you don't wanna set yourself up for a yes or no answer. Meaning like, do you want to join? Do you want to purchase this? Does that sound like something you're interested in? No, 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 no. Don't do that. Because you're setting yourself up for a yes or no. Whereas if you say to them, um, which option uh, is better for you? Um, you, could, you could say like <clears throat> getting started with uh, morning meltdown 100 this week, or did you want to start fresh next week? It doesn't, it doesn't even matter what two options you give them it's just giving them two options. That's all. And you're going to get the commitment there first. You get the yes at that point there. Um, okay, so the take action steps here are the option close. Which one is better for you, A or B? Make sure you have, um, uh, you have a soft option close as well. So what I mean by this is that if someone says, oh, I'm, I'm really not 
not sure like uh, right now, um, don't treat it as a no, treat it as a not right now. So if they say like, oh no, like I need to think about it, I don't wanna get started right away, move to a trial close. Get them started on VOD with a 14 day trial. Perfect, I totally get that. You don't wanna um, jump in right now, you don't, you're gonna try it out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you set up with a trial, you're gonna get a full two weeks to give it, you know, give this a try, um, give Beachbody On Demand a try, make sure you love it, um, you'll get a, you know, a sample of everything and then I can follow up with you from there once you're loving it and seeing the benefits. So always make sure you have, like, don't just stop if they say, no, nah, not right now, I'm not sure. Like, go on to the next uh, soft option close there. So what I want you guys to remember is you're not selling, you are educating. Everything that you've done up until this point is free. You haven't even, you haven't even asked for money. You've said, do you want to start this week or next week? You have sold nothing. So educate, educate, educate. That is what you're doing. You go into every day knowing that you're educating and you're not selling, you're not inviting, you're educating people. And that is what this is really, really about. So I want to invite you guys, I'm going to post this in the group because this is like, it's a, it's a long, um, it's a long URL. I have a free group I run, Business Bootcamp for Fitness Coaches. Um, I do like freebies, I do Facebook Lives where we talk about this kind of stuff. Like, the, for example, the last one we did is on Shakeology when people say it's expensive. What do you say, what do you do? Love those types of questions. So we talk about all that sort of stuff there. So this is the group, I'll make sure to post that. And then I've got two other programs that are running right now. The first one is called the Done For You September Marketing Package, or sorry, Strategy. So what we do in that is I provide and help you with all your posts for the month, um, what to email out to your um, potential customers, uh, what to do in your challenge groups, and I give you a freebie as well to start attracting people. So that's one way that I help coaches. Um, the other one is called the Done For You Messaging um, and Monthly Posting Plan. So this one is like legit. Like I had a lot of people asking me for this. They're like, cool, like the training. What do you have for me from this point forward? So this one is 30 days of exactly um, what to post on social and then your follow-up message following this formula. So you don't have to think about it. You just have to like tweak it and add in the details, but it has all the scripting right embedded for 30 days. Um, so again, I will, I'll share that link with you guys in your group. Um, so guys, it's been a pleasure. I would love to answer any questions you guys have. How do we do on time? Are we good? Oh, seven minutes to spare. Excellent. All right. I am going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and I'll open it up to you guys if you, uh, have any questions and we'll read the chat here just to see if there's any questions as well. Ashley, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. How do you deal with people that ghost you when you like invite them and they just, they never respond, you know, they've seen your message. Um, you know, you can see their little face that they've seen you, um, but they don't respond. I would say like, understand that people will go through their, like they move at different times through the stages of change. So don't take it as like they're ghosting you. They're like, just like ghosting life right now. It's not you. It's like just mm -hmm. them. They have this like thing they want to achieve. They wouldn't be watching your stories. They wouldn't be like engaging with you in some way. If they didn't have a deep desire to change, it's not you. They just aren't ready. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep focusing on the people that are taking action and like talk, like you can still, I sometimes like to call people out that like, you know, the ones I know are hesitating, like I will speak directly to them in a Facebook live. So in that scenario, I may say, Hey, like, I know you're out there and you're unsure of how to take action in your life. And maybe you, you know, you see all these great things out there, these tools you can try, and you're just not sure where to start. Like, let me help you break it down. That is how I would go about it. I would speak to them directly, um, knowing that like some people just like, they won't be ready right the second, but stay consistent. Just stay the course. Cause I'm sure like 
every coach out there has probably gone through something like that where the first post, unless you're a unicorn, some of you are unicorns out there that saw the first post and were like, yes, I'm on the bandwagon. But some of you aren't. You're like, oh, it took me three years. And like, then you're like, well, it's the best thing I did in my life. So it just sort of like, just stay the course, speak to them directly, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. You're so welcome. Anyone else have any questions? I have a question for Danielle. <laughs> you, in, the, in the chat, you said you just joined that group. Which one did you just join? Because I think that, um, I think maybe we should all do it together. I think it, the group that um, Ashley was yeah. talking about, the uh, business page for fitness professionals, is that what it's called? Sorry. Uh, I'm business boot right camp now. for fitness professionals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to jump in on that. Yeah, it's, uh, I put, I post a lot of, I get a lot of questions. There's about 1800, close to 1800 coaches in there. So I get a lot of questions and that is just the place that I, yeah, like to talk about the answers for that stuff. And um, I have, um, I also send out weekly emails. So like last week is when I covered the Shakeology, like what to do when someone's like, well, it's too expensive. This week I covered the, what do you do if someone's like, I don't have time. Love that. Love that excuse. Love it. Um, so yeah, I cover a lot of that in my email series um, and try to answer a lot of those questions. Cause like what you guys are dealing with is, is the exact same stuff. I was dealing with all the time with memberships and it was even more awkward because you're in front of them and you're like, which of these options is better? And they're like, I don't have time right now. And you're like, cool. Is that the only thing stopping you from getting started? So it's like, no one could ghost you, which I mean, I guess technically they could, but I just love it. I love the banter. I love this stuff. So I'm super happy to help you guys. Yeah. That, that uh, first one we talked about uh, is a Facebook group business bootcamp for fitness coaches. That's a free Facebook group. The other two, the monthly September plan, um, that and the messaging plan are two separate. Um, those are two separate like paid plans, but the business bootcamp for fitness coaches is all free. All that I ask is if you guys don't mind, if you want to get, if you, I mean, Ashley can post the links and stuff, but do your talk, your conversation with her private messaging because I don't since we're trying to become a council event eventually with the northern Nevada Beach I don't know all the rules and I don't want to get in trouble before we get started <laughs> so you know we'll, we'll get that you you know we'll get the stuff posted in the group so people can have access to getting the information from you Ashley but then just go ahead and start um when you when you get to the point where you really want to sign up for her free group or her one of her paid groups or whatever work with is that okay with you Ashley because I don't want a whole bunch of of that I mean I don't mind it being talked about a little bit because I want people to be helped and have that because we did have even before I asked you we had conversations somebody just randomly posts in our group I need help with posts I need help with you know and so I want to have that option out there for everybody but I also don't want it to become overwhelming where people are like uh we shouldn't you know what I mean if that makes any sense yeah, I just threw my email there in the chat too. If you guys have, like, you want to email me or reach out directly, you guys can totally do that as well. So I'll just send all the links um, to you, Crystal, and then you can decide, and the recording and stuff like that. And then you guys can decide how you want to share that. No, I'm perfectly fine with you posting that on the oh, page. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah, what I don't want is, you know, I mean, when people start reaching out to you about it, start moving it to a group or to an email conversation um you know like you would with with our business stuff you know we won't post that all over our page um but no i want you to post that stuff and i don't know are you going to share the slides with us too yes. or okay perfect yeah because i would like to have all that posted in the group you're in the group so or in the northern beach yeah. body in our group so you can go ahead and do that yeah for sure sounds good does anyone else have any questions or Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you guys so much for uh, jumping on and taking the time to, yeah, be a part of this tonight. I really appreciate it. I, thank you so much, Ashley. I mean, I know it's so late and I know you have storms where you are and everything, but this was awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.